Hi there friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we're going to do an oil change on a uh, Ford Ranger pickup truck. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, some of the tools and uh, supplies that you'll need to do an oil change. First of all, you'll need uh, four or five quarts of uh, motor oil and a new oil filter. You'll need a drain pan. You'll need some sort of oil filter wrench. I've actually laid out a couple different types here. Here's your traditional strap wrench, um, cone type um, oil filter wrenches that are kind of made to fit one particular filter. We have this type here that actually expands in and out to um, fit a, a numerous size different filters. And a pair of channel locks. Sometimes if i uh, got enough room underneath the car, just go ahead and clamp that on there. That works about as good as anything. Uh, tools that you'll need to take the drain plug out is either some uh, basic uh, box end wrenches or a ratchet and uh, the correct size socket. Um, when you go to uh, tighten up your uh, uh, oil plug, you don't want to over tighten it. And if you feel like you, you may, just uh, go ahead and grab you a torque wrench. And 15 or 20 foot pounds is usually enough to tighten it down. Always inspect your crush washer. Now today, on this vehicle, I actually have a, uh, a little quick drain fitting installed on this. And this is the tool right here that you use to drain it. You pull the little cap off, screw this on, and it depresses the little ball bearing, and it just drains out. I'll show you that when we get underneath the vehicle. You'll also want to get you a new oil change sticker and a Sharpie to uh, write your new mileage down on. Now folks, if you do have to jack up your vehicle, you'll need some sort of jack. And uh, it, it can be a floor jack or, or any other type of jack, but definitely do not ever crawl underneath the vehicle with just a jack supporting it. You'll definitely want to use jack stands and make sure that they are either underneath the frame rail or underneath the pinch weld, okay? Jack stands are real easy to use. You just slide it underneath. You can move them up and down as need be and definitely have these underneath the car if you're going to be crawling underneath the car. Do not ever trust a jack. So folks, we're getting ready to crawl underneath here. We're going to go ahead and get the oil draining and we'll see you in a minute. Okay friends, hey, we're underneath the car here and here's the uh, little uh, quick drain um, oil plug here that I was telling you about. Now it has a cap on it. It's just put on finger tight. So we're going to go ahead and pull that loose. Lay it down. And then we're going to take our tool here that I showed you earlier. Screw it on here. And as you screw it down, it depresses the little uh, ball bearing. And all of a sudden this thing will start draining oil here momentarily. This is a little difficult to do and film also. But there we go. I know my hand's in the way. But now you'll see it's screwed down and there is oil draining from it, okay? So we're going to walk away. We're going to let all that oil drain out and then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, replace the oil filter. Okay friends, hey, uh, this oil filter on this vehicle is actually easier to get to from up top. I don't know if you can see this, the, the black thing in the center of the picture there. I'm going to reach down here with the uh, strap type oil filter wrench. I'm going to work my hand down here and put the wrench on the filter, turn it counterclockwise, to loosen it up, and that got it broke loose. I'll take my hand back down here and we will loosen it. Now we did stick another drain pan underneath this side to catch most of the oil leaking from this filter. So we've got the filter just about off. I'm going to go ahead and just tip it straight down where most of the oil can drain down into my drain pan. And then I'm going to pull it back up through this opening here. Okay. Folks, very important thing I want to show you now is uh, this is where a lot of inexperienced mechanics make a mistake. You pull your old oil filter off, 
make sure your old ring is still attached to the filter okay sometimes it will actually stick to the block and then when you screw a new oil filter on there you'll have two o-rings and actually the one that's from left from the old filter will actually blow out and you will have a very large oil leak i've seen guys do that over the years and uh, it makes a big old mess and you also want to either if you can see the uh, fitting on the block to make sure that it doesn't have any o-ring attached to it make sure it's nice and clean if you can see it great if you can take your hand down there and rub rub across it that's even better and uh, just make sure you don't make that mistake okay we're going to get our new oil filter we're going to put a bead of oil on it and screw it on okay folks here's our brand new oil filter and I poured out a little bit of oil <clears throat> into the cap here I'm going to take it and I'm just going to put a thin bead of oil on our new uh, new filter here and then we're going to go ahead and reach in here and uh, screw our new filter on we're going to go back down through the same opening that we pulled the old one out of I know this is difficult to see, it's actually difficult for me to see, but we have our filter there and we've got it started. So folks what you want to do is go ahead and tighten this filter down, screw it all the way down and then you want to add about a quarter to a half turn is about all you want to do just by hand do not put an oil filter wrench on that filter and tighten it up any tighter than that it's not necessary and it will make it very difficult for the next guy to remove that does the next oil change so folks that's really all you need to do with your filter folks while we're waiting for our oil to drain we're going to go ahead and fill out our oil change sticker and we've already checked our mileage and our next oil change will be done at 132,000 miles. So we're just going to write 132K and stick that up on the windshield and to remind us when it's time to change our oil once again. Okay, friends, hey, we've already went back underneath the vehicle and we removed our little drain plug tool, you know, that we had screwed on there for uh, draining the oil. Uh, wiped off the excess oil, put the little cap back on, and we're back up top getting ready to pour the brand new motor oil into the engine. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, there's five quarts in this jug here. I think this engine, if I remember correctly, I should know since it's my vehicle, but uh, it takes between four and five quarts. So we're going to go ahead and pour in about four, and then we'll. Uh, Put the cap on, we'll crank it up, let the engine fill the filter up, and we'll make a couple checks on the dipstick, and this uh, oil change will be complete. So I think we got about a quart left there. So folks, that's really all there is to it. Just uh, you know, make sure you get your oil level right from this point on, and uh, crank the engine, let it run 15, 20 seconds, shut it off come out here find your uh, dipstick which ours is right here and we'll uh, make sure we got the correct uh, level for the engine and we're basically done folks I want to thank you for watching the video today I hope this helped a little bit uh, don't forget to check out our store um, at minthillbillystore.com we have a few items up for sale and then up and coming months we will have a complete DVD on rebuilding a Holly carburetor and also a DVD on roofing so uh, stay tuned for that um, uh, don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time take care and have a great day